morning everyone and welcome again to Talks on Uncle Trev. So over the last three weeks we have been looking at the lost and found parables that Jesus told in Luke chapter 15. Can you remember them? The first one was about the lost sheep that the good shepherd went and found. And when he found the sheep he put it on his shoulders and he walked back home rejoicing that he found his lost sheep. And then the week after that, we looked at the woman who spent all that time searching for the silver coin that was lost from the chain upon her head. Oh, when she found it, she was so excited, wasn't she? And she called her neighbours and they rejoiced together. And then last week, we looked at the two sons. The first son was selfish and he took his money and he went off into that distant land and he wasted it. But then he came to his senses and he was really sorry for what he had done. He went back to his father and he pleaded with his father to accept him as a servant. But his father treated him in a way that he didn't expect. He welcomed him home and they had a party to celebrate that he'd returned. But the oldest son, he was angry with his father because he'd shown so much kindness to his brother. Now this week, we're not looking at a parable. This week, we're going to look at a real life story of Jesus seeking out and finding someone who was lost. Now the person that Jesus was going to seek was a man called Zacchaeus. Now Zacchaeus was a tax collector. We know from our previous stories that the leaders of the Jews and the Pharisees they didn't like these tax collectors at all. But why? Well, the tax collectors worked for the Romans. Now the Romans were in charge of the country. They were the enemy, they'd taken over. And these tax collectors, their job was to take money from the Jewish people and to give it to the Romans. Imagine you earn 10 coins. The tax collector would come along and he would take five coins from you. He'd only give three to the Romans because that's what they wanted. And he'd take two for himself and pocket it in his pocket. So he cheated the money from the people. And because of that, they hated him for it. Now the other thing about Zacchaeus was he was tiny. He was a really, really small man. Now Zacchaeus had just heard that Jesus was arriving in Jericho and he was so excited to see him. A large crowd was already following Jesus because Jesus had just healed a blind man. Can you imagine how Zacchaeus felt? He really wanted to see Jesus but he had no chance of getting near him because he was so small. He tried his best but people just shoved him out of the way. Then he had an idea. I know what I'll do, he said. I'll run ahead and I'll climb one of those sycamore fig trees. If I get onto those branches, I'll have a really good place where I can look down and I'll see Jesus. Now once Zacchaeus had climbed up into his tree, he would have waited as the crowd and Jesus walked towards him. Can you imagine his heart beating as he watched Jesus walking down the road? And then Jesus was standing almost directly underneath him. Suddenly, everyone stopped. The crowd stopped because Jesus had stopped and then Jesus looked up and he looked straight at Zacchaeus. What would Jesus say? Would he say, come down here little man? Or would he say, come down here tax collector? No, Jesus said Zacchaeus. 
He knew his name. How did Jesus know his name? Well, Jesus knew his name because this was the lost sheep that Jesus was coming to find. And he was finding him not stuck in a bush, not over the side of a cliff. He was finding his lost sheep up a tree. Zacchaeus, come down because I need to come to your house today. Can you imagine how Zacchaeus felt? Jesus was asking him to come to his house so that they could be friends. So when Zacchaeus came down the tree, Jesus and him welcomed each other. And Zacchaeus repented for what he had done. What does it mean to repent? Well, the word repent means two things. Firstly, it means turning around. You see, Zacchaeus was living his life in one direction. He was living his life for himself, to make money and to be a cheat. But in order to follow Jesus, he had to turn around. He had to turn away from his selfishness and he had to turn towards Jesus. He knew he had to say sorry for what he had done. So what, what did Zacchaeus do to repent? Well, the first thing he did to turn around and say sorry was he said, I'm going to give half of my money to the poor. The second way he said he was going to turn around and say sorry was, if I have cheated anyone out of anything, I will pay them back four times. So if I've cheated them 10 coins, I will give them back 40 coins. If, I, if I've cheated them 100 coins, I will pay them back 400 coins. Zacchaeus was definitely repenting. He was definitely turning away from his old life and turning to Jesus. How different he was from that rich man. A few chapters earlier, the religious man who'd kept all the commands, when Jesus asked him to turn away from all his riches and follow Jesus, he wasn't prepared to do it. So how does our story of Jesus and Zacchaeus finish? Well, Jesus tells us at the end of the story that salvation has come to Zacchaeus' house. In other words, Zacchaeus has been saved. Zacchaeus has been rescued. He has repented from his old life and he has decided to follow Jesus. He is the lost sheep that has been found. So what a wonderful ending to a fantastic story. When I read that story, I often think about the angels celebrating in heaven when Zacchaeus is found. What did it cost Zacchaeus to become a follower of Jesus? Well, it didn't really cost him that much, did it really? He ran down a road, he climbed a tree. <laughs> He was found by Jesus. He had to turn away from his old life and give away some of his money. But really, it didn't cost him an awful lot. What did it cost Jesus to find Zacchaeus and to rescue him and to save him? Well, if you turn on your Bible a few more pages, you'll see another person in a tree but this person is hanging on a tree. He's hanging on a cross. It's the Good Shepherd. It's Jesus himself. And he's hanging on that tree. And I can imagine him thinking about Zacchaeus. I can imagine him thinking, Zacchaeus, this is what it costs me to rescue you. All your cheating, 
all your lying, all your selfishness, all your pride. God the Father is now punishing me instead of you. Zacchaeus, I am taking your place on this cross because I love you and because I came to rescue you and to find you and to make you safe. And you know, that's what the Lord Jesus does for everyone he finds, for every lost sheep. He takes our blame, our punishment, what we deserve, he takes it on the cross. We don't deserve it. I can imagine Zacchaeus saying, but Jesus, I don't deserve all this. You've rescued me. You've made me a family. You put me into the family of God. You've made God my father. You are now my friend and my brother. You've got a safe place for me in heaven to live with you one day. I've got the Holy Spirit now who's my comforter. You've given me all these amazing things. I don't deserve all this love. It's amazing. It's grace. I can imagine Zacchaeus saying, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. I have found this incredible person, Jesus, and I'm gonna follow him for the rest of my life. And one day, I will spend forever in heaven with him. Well, that's the testimony of Zacchaeus. What about you? Are you still lost? Cry out to Jesus so that he will save you and that you will be found. It's amazing grace. Thanks for listening.